In this video, we talk about a new operation on vectors called the scalar or dot product. We already know how to add and subtract vectors and how to multiply vectors by scalars. There are a couple of more operations that we'll consider. Firstly, the scalar or dot product of two vectors, and also later the vector or cross product of two vectors. These two different uh, operations are useful because they allow us to investigate some more engineering and science based problems. In this video, we're going to look at the scalar product, and we'll look at how to calculate it, as well as a couple of its uses. The definition provided here is given in three dimensions, but it also extends back to two dimensions and forward to four, five, six, any number of dimensions that you like. So given vector A equal to A1i plus A2j plus A3k, and another vector B, B1i plus B2j plus B3k, the dot or scalar product, written like this, of A and B is simply given by the sum of the products of the individual coefficients. If the vectors are given to us in geometrical form rather than Cartesian or rectangular form, there's no need to convert. There's another simple formula. A dot B is given by the product of the two magnitudes, A and B, and then the cosine of the angle between the two vectors, uh, theta AB in this case. The scalar product always results in an answer, which is a scalar or a number, and that's why it's called the scalar product. It's called the dot product because we use the symbol of a dot to represent it. Let's have a look at this example where we're asked to find the scalar product of these two vectors in three dimensions. Use the result to determine the angle between the vectors by going back and using the geometrical formula. Give yourself a few moments now to try this one out for yourself and then come back to the video after you've had a go. The way to approach this question is to do the first thing you're asked to do first, that is to find the scalar product of the two vectors. They're given in Cartesian form, so we can use the pink version of the formula here from the previous slide. Once we've calculated that, we'll know the left hand side of the green formula. We can also figure out the magnitudes of the two vectors, and then we'd only have one unknown left in the green version of the formula, that being the angle between the two vectors, which is the thing we're asked to find second. So first of all, to the dot product. The dot product of x and y is given by the sum of the products of the corresponding coefficients. So the i coefficients are 3 and minus 1. Multiplied together gives minus 3. Then we add the coefficients of j multiplied together. The j coefficient here is 0, so we're just going to get 0 there. And finally, the k coefficients, minus 2 and 4, gives us minus 8 altogether. So we end up with a dot product of minus 11. On the previous slide, the geometrical version of the formula tells us that x dotted with y is equal to the product of the magnitudes of x and y and the cosine of the angle, theta, between x and y, which is what we're asked to find here. We know what x dot y is, it's minus 11, so we can substitute that in straight away. The magnitude of x is the square root of the sum of the squares of the coefficients. So we have 3 squared is 9 and minus 2 squared is 4, added together gives us 13. Similarly for y, minus 1 squared is 1, minus 1 squared is 1 again, and 4 squared is 16. So we have 18, and the square root of 18 for the magnitude of y. And finally, the unknown, the cosine of the theta, the angle between x and y. Rearranging this, we have that the cosine of theta xy is equal to minus 11 divided by the square root of 13 times the square root of 18. Using our calculator, that's approximately minus 0.7. And finally, to get at that theta, we need to use the inverse cosine function. So theta xy is the inverse cosine of minus 0.7, approximately. And if we do that on a calculator, we should get around about 134 degrees. So the angle between x and y is about 134 degrees which we've found by using a dot product formula and then a bit of a rearrangement when we use the geometric form of the formula. So that's one of the uses for the dot product, finding angles between vectors. Given that the dot product can tell us that sort of information, it can also tell us when vectors are orthogonal or perpendicular, if you like, at right angles, and it can be used to verify when vectors are perpendicular. To see this, we need to remember that perpendicular vectors 
are separated by an angle of 90 degrees, or pi on 2 radians if you like. Now remember that the cosine of pi on 2, or cos of 90, is equal to 0. So for vectors a and b to be perpendicular, we must have that their dot product is equal to 0, because in the geometric form, we would have cosine of 90 degrees or cosine of pi on 2 equal to 0, and the whole right-hand side of the green formula would be 0. So we have this result. For vectors a and b to be perpendicular, we must have that their dot product, or scalar product, is equal to 0. And that's another use for our dot product, verifying perpendicular vectors, or finding a vector that's perpendicular. Let's check out this example where we're asked to use the scalar product to find a vector x that's perpendicular to y equal to 3i minus 3j, a minus j. Let's assume that this is in two dimensions. Pause the video now if you like, and have a go at this one yourself. First of all, assuming we're in two dimensions, let's let our unknown vector x be x1i plus x2j. Then if we want it to be perpendicular to y equals 3i minus j, then we need x dotted with y equal to 0. That's what we need for these two things to be perpendicular. We can change this left-hand side using what we know about the dot product formula for Cartesian vectors x1 multiplied by 3, or 3x1, plus x2 multiplied by minus 1, or, if you like, minus x2, must be equal to 0. So in other words, we have that x2 must be equal to whatever x1 is multiplied by 3. Effectively, this is telling us that x1 can be whatever we like, but whatever we pick it to be, x2 must be equal to 3 times that number, in order for x and y to be perpendicular vectors. To make things simple, let's just take x1 equal to 1. That means then that x2 will be 3 multiplied by that, or just 3. So the vector x equal to i plus 3j will be perpendicular to x2, I uh, will be perpendicular to y. You can go back and check this if you like by multiplying the coefficient here 1 and 3 to get 3, and then 3 by minus 1 to get minus 3. Adding them together gives us the exact result we need. x dot y is equal to 0. So we've been able to find a vector perpendicular to another vector using the dot product. To finish up, if you're looking in other texts, check out their sections on scalar or dot products. There's also plenty of websites that describe this in similar and somewhat different ways sometimes. Attempt the exercises from the worksheets and make sure you're understanding those. Add any informa important information related to scalar products of vector vectors to your cheat sheets.